Okay, so this is different. Yeah. We're going to call this Random Things with Genki and Pop Pop because we got nowhere else to put in random things <laughs> that we want to share with you. Right. So in episode one, we're actually sharing instructions or kind of a roadmap on how to sous vide yes. two different types of meats because yeah. Grandpa Brown um, just got a sous vide and we're going to share this with him right now. Yay! Okay, in this video, we are going to make a perfect steak. Here, we're gonna start with this New York steak here. And it is mostly frozen. It's only been sitting on the counter for about an hour to defrost, but there is still some liquid in there, we can see. So because this one is a little bit frozen, I'm going to use my little finger bowl and just put some water on it. And with my dry hand, some salt. Gonna lightly pat that down there so it doesn't fly away and then for this one I'm just going to use turmeric and I want to be a little bit generous with this okay, I'm not going to touch that or I'll just get all over my hands I'm going to turn this over I'm going to wash my hands and do the same thing on the other side so if I'm doing this by myself, I'll fold over the top here so that I can protect where it's going to seal. And sometimes I can do this very carefully by myself, sometimes I can't. Let's go ahead and pop this in here. It's easier when it's frozen. And that went in there really nice. And I'm gonna wash my hands and then we're going to... So now I was able to do that without um, contaminating the seal, so I'll just fold this back up here. If I did get some on there, I've got some paper towel with the, with the water dish. I could just kind of do that, clean the seal in here, and then dry it off with another paper towel. But I'm good to go here. I've got this on moist now. Really is important when you're doing um, meats that's not thawed out, or that is not frozen. But I use it all the time for meats anyway. Got my hand on the seal button, so when I see any blood or any juice coming up there, I'm going to kill it right away. I see some running in here, but it's not coming up in here yet. There, we got some there. Some right here that's starting to come up there, so I killed it so it doesn't come up into the seal. And so now I'm going to put this, because it's a little bit frozen, I'm going to put this in the refrigerator for two days. We'll be back then. So this has been in the fridge for two days. After one day, I um, pulled it out just to make sure that it was thawed out, because we just want one day in the fridge with this thawed out, soaking in the rub that we put on it. I filled this up just to the 10 quart mark with water. And so first, I'm going to put my lid on because that's going to tell me where the collar needs to be. And once we get in that in place, we just slide this in and plug it in. And we can see that the water coming out of my hot water heater is probably going to go up to about 120 is what I found. Down here, I'm going to rotate this to steak setting. I found 133 degrees to be the best for me, for my taste. And then turn that on. And I don't have to wait for it to preheat. I'm just going to go ahead and dump the meat in there now.
and I'm going to set my timer for one and a half hours, 90 minutes. Okay, so an hour and a half has gone by. I'm going to turn off the power. I'm going to unplug it from the wall. And then when I get it up, I want to be real careful because some water is going to come out of there. dump it straight into the sink. That's what I typically do, but I've got a handle right here, so I'm just gonna grab that, and I'm gonna move it, cut this open, and put it on a plate. So I'm gonna save that juice. I could put it on a potato or whatever, but this juice is gonna be gold for something. A little bit. I think I'm gonna cook my shrimp in it, actually. I'm gonna put just a little bit of Spicy paprika on here, just a little bit, see? Not too much. And then some pepper. And I've got this olive oil heated up, and I'm just gonna do, whoo, it just fell apart. I'm gonna do a minute on each side. Listen to that goodness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. good. That's good too. Okay, so let's just do just a tip. Just a little bit. <laughs> Hardly any at all, you can hardly tell. Hardly any. Okay. So we're not cooking here, we're just giving it a little bit of crust. Now for another minute. Now, let's see what it looks like. I already know what it's going to look like. Perfectly cooked. Very, very tender. I did cook this um, for a salad. I'm going to cube this up and use it in salads. Or else maybe I would have gone to 130. Probably would have gone to 130 if I wanted it just a little bit more red than that. You can go down to 129 for an hour or two. And then sear on both sides. Now, let's do something that is a lot tougher than this. So now I have a beef brisket. This one I'm not doing from frozen. It has been in the fridge uh, for a couple days thawing out. And so I'm going to use the Malden's smoked sea salt because I'm not going to use a smoker on this. And this stuff's really good. So again, dry hand, meat hand. And... I would go ahead and use your rub if you've got it. I'm out of rub, so I'm putting some stuff together for specifically for this. And so a little bit of garlic. A little bit of ground cayenne pepper. And then a little 
little chili powder. I'm not going to rub it in. I want it to do it naturally in the fridge, but I don't want it to just fall off when it comes in contact with the other side of the paper. And same thing, smoked salt, more garlic, I'm going to skip the cayenne pepper. I got enough on the first side and then a little bit of chili powder. Did we lose our focus there? Mm-hmm. It's because I'm moving too fast. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now I'm going to do the same thing as far as putting this in a vacuum seal bag and then put it in the fridge overnight for, well, over the next day for 24 hours. And then we'll be back to do the brisket. So here we have the beef brisket. Typically a very tough brand of meat or cut of meat, um, but this is going to make it so tender. This has been in the fridge actually for a day and a half over there. So I've got my uh, larger 22 quart. Um, I could have cut this up and put chunks of this in their own bags and put it in the freezer um, with the rub on it. And then when I pull it out to defrost it, I'm just gonna leave it in the fridge for a day after that, um, after it thaws out. So this has been in there. It's been soaking up all the juices. I'm gonna drop that in there. Okay, put the lid on. We gotta put the lid on first or else we don't know where the collar goes exactly. Okay, and we do have a minimum and a maximum fill line. I already know where that's gonna hit on this, but you're gonna to wanna to be mindful of that your first time. Let's turn this on. And again, the hot water heater is gonna go up to about 122. I'm going to turn this on, and we're gonna go up to 155 for this one. And we're gonna cook this for 24 to 36 hours, or a day to a day and a half and then we're gonna come back. Okay, so we are, let's see, five plus 24, we're 29 hours into this. I'm gonna turn this off and unplug it. And then again, let the water drain a little bit. I put this right next to the sink, make everything a lot easier. So get rid of the collar. And then again, I just have a cute little handle I can grab this with, or else I would just dump everything into the sink and pull it out, fish it out. Okay, so let's cut this open here. And I make extra long, you might be asking that question, because I don't like the juices running up into the, the seal when I am vacuum packing it. Okay, and so that is the brisket. I'm gonna save the juice. And very tough brand of meat. Cooked really nicely. Oh my goodness, let me try a little chunk of that. A little chunk of chunk of it. And then at this point in the past, I have put it on the smoker to get some bark on here but I'm just gonna make this for salads and so I'm not gonna sear it or anything else. And it is absolutely delicious, oh my goodness. So there's a steak and a brisket, have at it.